So you're watching this video because a friend or a family member may have sent this to you about the Great Reset. First of all, they care enough about you to send this video. And second, this video begin to scratch the surface as to what the Great Reset is actually all about. And listen, I get that the Great Reset sounds like a crazy tinfoil conspiracy theory or it's some right wing theory that people are spouting about. But honestly, I personally felt the same way about it almost two years ago when it was first announced. But then I put my critical thinking hat on and really started to do my own independent research about what the Great Reset is actually all about. Now, I'm not going to draw any conclusion for you, but I'm simply going to go and state some facts and ask really important questions about them. And I want you to draw up your own conclusion based on these facts. So let's dive right in. So what exactly is the Great Reset? Who made it up? And why does this even matter to you? So let's go and set the backdrop to this conversation. It all goes back to an organization called the World Economic Forum, founded in 1971 by a German engineer and economist, Klaus Schwab. And we'll talk more about this guy in another video. The World Economic Forum is not some secret organization or a group. They're actually wildly public and regularly publish this article with their views on their own website that anyone has access to. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. The World Economic Forum consists of 3,000 paying members from over 60 countries around the world. To join this group, you have to be invited in and there is a strict criteria that you have to meet. Oh, and uh, you do have to pay $52,000 for the individual membership and the fee increases to $628,000 to become a strategic partner. Some of the prominent members include Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook or Meta, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, and Bill Gates to name a few. Each year, the four members will meet in Davos, Switzerland, bringing together company CEOs, politicians, academics, religious leaders, and the media. And they've been meeting every year since 1988 till now, except for the year of 2021 due to the coronavirus pandemic. But it's the meeting that was held in 2020 that sparked the topic of this video. Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, announces that he is launching a new project called the Great Reset that consists of five major plans to quote unquote, enhance sustainable economic growth following the global recession. Quoting Schwab, he says, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect reimagine and reset our world. In fact, Schwab is so committed to this project that he even wrote a book titled The Great Reset and you can even buy it on Amazon. Looks like Klaus owes us some money on sponsorship. Now, this Great Reset thing sounds good and all on the surface and on paper, but is it really? That leads us to what exactly are the plans of The Great Reset from a 30,000 feet perspective. First, The Great Reset project calls for people to own nothing and be happy. More specifically, a video released by the World Economic Forum has this scene with the subtitle, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Already sounds interesting, doesn't it? And it's been almost two years since the Great Reset has been announced. So has there been any developments that could possibly link back to this? Again, I'm gonna simply state the facts and allow you to draw up on your own conclusion about some of the things that are happening. Recently as July this year, 2022, the World Economic Forum published an article suggesting that people shouldn't be owning cars anymore due to the environmental concerns but instead rely on the shared economy and eventually transition to self-driving cars so that there are less cars on the road. This is an idea that companies like Uber are trying out to figure out how to get driverless transportation for food delivery, for example. So ultimately, the World Economic Forum wants to advance a world where no one owns their cars and transportation would essentially become a public utility. But my question is, who would own these self-driving cars? I mean, if it's Uber, wouldn't a world where they own the entire transportation market lead to more profitability and revenue for them? Doesn't that sound like it increases our reliance on these giant tech companies that can now track where we go and how we go about our lives? And what's to say that they can't make a large policy decision on our way of transportation without our consent? After all, they would have all the powers to do so. Right? And surprise, surprise, Uber is also part of the World Economic Forum. Again, I don't want to think for you, but these are just questions I have. And I truly believe that the best of the best ideas are created when ideas are challenged, wrestled with, and questioned. And if that makes me a conspiracy theory, then I guess we're not allowed to critically think for ourselves anymore. But that's just one example of how the Great Reset personally doesn't sit well with me. Second, the World Economic Forum wants you to eat less certain type of food. More specifically, the Great Reset calls for the population of the world to eat less meat. In fact, here's an article directly from the World Economic Forum website titled, Here's a simple way to convince people to eat less meat. And another article pointing to how eating less meat and dairy 
can save the rainforest. Even one of the staple agenda contributor of the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates, wants to develop nations of the world to eat less real meat, but begin switching to more synthetic meat, all in the name of protecting the environment. Now, synthetic meat is basically meat created in a lab somewhere using plant-based ingredients. But is that really why Bill Gates wants more people to eat synthetic meat? Or does it have anything to do with the fact that Bill Gates now owns several companies that make these synthetic meats? And the fact that many of these companies are investing in patents and exclusive rights to certain ingredients, are we sure it's not greed that we're talking about here? So let me get this straight. A group of ultra wealthy businessmen and politicians want us to eat less real meat and switch to meat created in a factory and a lab? I mean, that sounds awfully a lot like an elaborate plan for us to make Bill Gates even wealthier than he is now. So again, I don't wanna think for you or decide for you. I want you to believe what you want to believe based on these facts and draw up on your own conclusion. Now, I don't have all the answers to these questions and certainly the next question I would have is how does this affect our nutrition and overall health. Will synthetic meat make us sicker or will it have no different effect than eating real and organic meat? I don't know. Tell me what you think. And this isn't just about meat. Can't you see that if they're able to do this, dictate whether we can eat meat or not, what's next? Is it entirely possible and reasonable that the World Economic Forum might target other types of diets and categories of food? Again, Think about what they can do when given such power with one area of our food industry. Now, I've only scratched just a thin layer of the iceberg that is the Great Reset as promoted by the World Economic Forum. And if you notice a pattern by now, to me, it sounds like a project for the ultra wealthy and powerful to flex more control over our way of life. And personally, many of the World Economic Forum participants are not democratically elected leaders. Going back to their mission statement clearly written on their website, the forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leader society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. So where's the part about asking us, the average people, what we think how the culture in the future should be? If you claim to believe in democracy and fair representation, shouldn't these people from the World Economic Forum be coming to us and ask about our values, our priority, and what we believe to be is true? Right? I mean, for one, my country, the United States, doesn't have an elected delegate to the World Economic Forum. So if you're ultra rich and powerful, you just pay to join this group where highly influential people are talking about what projects or policies they should enact that impact everyday people like the rest of us. An example and a clear aftermath of this is Joe Biden's Build Back Better initiative that was heavily promoted by the presidential campaign. But where did this idea came from? Did it come from Joe Biden's many interaction with the people of the United States? Did it come from the town hall meetings? Or did it come from the congressmen and women that are duly elected to represent the people? Nope, it came from the World Economic Forum. And this idea of Build Back Better existed before Joe Biden even became president. And it's not just the United States, Canada, whom the prime minister is also part of the World Economic Forum, also push for a similar version of the same name, Build Back Better. So you see, where our politicians and corporate leaders are getting their ideas are not from its citizens and shareholders. It appears that our politicians and corporate leaders are getting together every year on their own in Davos to discuss laws, policies, and agendas that shape our future and the future of our children. Unless the definition of democracy has changed recently, which seems like the normal thing now, this is not democracy. Now again, I only scratched the surface on this topic and it gets deeper. If you'd like to see part two of this video, please let us know as we'll continue to unsurface how the Great Reset is not a conspiracy theory and how I believe to be is a threat to our democracy and republic. And it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, I truly believe that as a country, we need to get together to be in unison, to come to unity, even though we may disagree on some of the points, we need to come together knowing that we want the best for the country Country, but it clearly seems like the World Economic Forum has a different idea about that. And it's not a conspiracy theory because conspiracy theories are not apparent as some of the hard and concrete evidence that I presented in this video. And of course, the Great Reset has a timeline to accomplish their agenda, and that is the year of 2030. There's a quite a few things that they want to accomplish, so if you want to see a full breakdown of what the Great Reset wants to accomplish by 2030, click on this video right here to learn more about this topic. So thanks for watching and thank the friend or the family member that sent you this video because they love you very much.